Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. This video is the first video of the Kotlin uh, flow playlist. In this video, I'm going to introduce the flow to you and uh, I'm going to show you a practical example on how we can use flow and why we should use flow. And later in the next videos, we are going deeper and deeper to the topic of flow. Before we start, please scan this QR code and you can have access to my social media addresses and uh, you can directly have contact with me if you want. Thank you very much. Let's get started. Flow in Kotlin. Flow is a part of uh, coroutines that we are using it to have a reactive program. First of all, let's see what is uh, reactive programming. A reactive program is a program that uh, has reaction based on each and uh, every action. Uh, just like the application that you can see in the photo. Uh, this is an app to monitor the stock market. Every second, uh, we can see that a lot of uh, prices are changing in the stock market. So we can uh, accept these changes as the action. And uh, the reaction of our application is uh, to show them in the UI. So when you have this kind of application, uh, you have reactive program. Reactive programming is a programming paradigm that focuses on handling asynchronous data streams and events. It allows developers to respond to changes in data or user interactions in real time. In Android, an example is using Kotlin Flow to manage the received data from a network card. Uh, the updates in the UI automatically will be done uh, by Flow without blocking the main thread this approach enhances app responsiveness and uh, user experience now let's see what is uh, kotlin flow kotlin flow is used for asynchronous data stream handling in kotlin kotlin flow is a reactive programming library designed for handling asynchronous data streams. It allows developers to emit and collect data over time in a structured way. So uh, based on the definition, it's uh, organizing uh, the flow of the data to send them and to receive them, uh, and also to display them to the user. Flow is called by default meaning it only starts emitting values when collected. It integrates uh, seamlessly with contain coroutines because, as I said, it's a part of coroutines, enhancing performance and reducing complexity in Android applications. Now let's check uh, the flow in Android development. Uh, I have provided some benefits of using uh, flow in Android development. Uh, you saw these uh, three benefits uh, in the last slide and uh, I'm going to explain the next uh, slide. Okay, life cycle awareness. Uh, the flow can be tied to Android lifecycle components, reducing memory leaks. Uh, as uh, in the previous videos, I explained you what is the lifecycle, so uh, you can uh, connect directly the flow to lifecycle of the activity, the view model, or uh, the application. And whenever uh, we are stopping the life cycle of each of them. The flow also will be stopped. So it prevents the memory leak. Reach operators. 
It offers a wide range of operators for transforming, filtering, and combining data streams, making it highly flexible for various use cases. And uh, finally, uh, back pressure support. Flow effectively manages data emission rate, allowing producers to control how quickly data is emitted, which is crucial for handling large streams of data. Now let's go to Android Studio and I'm going to provide you a, a short example to show you how we can use uh, Flow. And uh, we will continue this first part of the playlist. Okay, guys, here I have a repository class. Inside of it, I have two functions. Both of them are doing the same thing for me. Generating numbers between 1 to 10 and uh, sending them to a class that is calling these functions. But not the same completely. First one is uh, loading these numbers in a sequence and the second one is loading the number in a flow let's go to the view model here i have a view model class on the top i have created a variable for the repository then i have two more variables one of them is a private variable uh, to load the received number uh, inside it to use inside of the view model the other one is public and the state integer of this uh, current value will be loaded finally inside of this and uh, we can call it from main activity and display it in the UI. Here in the uh, init block I have called the repository dot generate number function and for each uh, item of the sequence that we are receiving i'm going to load the value inside of this variable and displaying it in a tag and i have another tag outside of this block inside the init block to display uh, that uh, the procedure is done or something else just to know that compiler is out of this block in the main activity on the top, in the global scope, I have a private variable for the view model, and here I have a column, and I have a text, and as the text of this text uh, element, I have view model dot current value dot value. Now let's check it on the emulator. Here is my log cat. Number one, two, three, and let's see. On the emulator, there is nothing to show. The UI thread is completely blocked. After the number 10 is displayed here and dawn is displayed here, we can see that finally we have something to show on the screen. Uh, and it's not good. Because consider here, instead of these two fake uh procedures we have a network call we have a sequence of receiving data and we can see only the last update and before that any type of data any sort of data that we received we cannot display it to the user now let's check uh, if we are using the flow what happens i'm going to comment the first repository call and on comment this one everything is the same the collect is suspend function so i'm using view model scope dot launch as you can see here it's written uh, that it should be called in the uh, view model or inside view model scope or inside another suspend function it's ready. Let's check it. Okay, here is my light cat. 
yeah number one done two three four five six and live data you can see all of the changes in the uh, receiving data in the ui so whenever our data is changing here the result immediately will be displaying uh, on the ui and as you can see this done after the uh, first number here in the log cat is displayed here i'm talking about here the first number is here then done that means uh, the compiler arriving here displaying this and going outside of this block and displaying this uh, it cannot block our ui thread that's why we are using block so how was the first part of this playlist did you like it please give me a thumbs up if yes and if you are new in the channel please hit the subscribe button right now to be aware about the new videos and also if you have any comment write them down below in the comment box and i'm going to read them and answer them have a good time happy coding bye bye